Traveler, Paimon Sitlali. Perfect timing. I've located the captain. Oh, really? That's great! We also just took a peek at Aurora's memories and discovered something huge! Oh, uh... All with his granny's permission, of course. Or no, actually, it was... Uh, calm down, Paimon. I'll take it from here. So the captain was searching for the source mechanism to reconstruct the ley lines. If his plan is already in motion, that means he knows exactly how to accomplish his goal. We have to stop him. Is reconstructing the ley lines a bad thing? Yes. It's not a simple fix. It would mean sacrificing nearly everything contained within the current ley lines, very similar to the price of using a Gnosis. If he activates the mechanism, it's all over. We need to mobilize our forces as soon as possible. But what forces do we have? Kanich, Shilonan, you two, and myself. All other warriors are working to push back the Abyss on the front lines. But that's barely any people! Not to mention you lost your power, and they've got the captain on their side! Oh, well, maybe we really should get Lolly to break Oronon's legs. That won't help us with the captain, I'm afraid. In any case, the Masters of the Nightwind are in urgent need of manpower. Lolly, I was hoping you could head back and help defend the tribe. All right. I understand where I'm needed. I'll head out right away. Don't worry about your grandson. We'll figure something out for sure. I'll leave him to you all, then. All right. Back to the matter at hand. I don't believe defeating the Captain needs to be our ultimate goal. Let me grab Shilonen and Kanich, then I'll tell you my idea. As you all know, Auroron is working with the Captain, and we need to stop their plan. The captain is a formidable opponent, but that shouldn't deter us. In any case, a head-on confrontation isn't the best way to solve the issue. Their plan hinges entirely on a single element, the source mechanism. If we leverage our forces, we can destroy it, and then success is ours. We'll head out together, and the event that a confrontation becomes inevitable, I'll stall the captain while you advance. I agree with Kanich. The two of us can handle it. Listen to my plan first. Kanich, I want you and Ahau to launch an assault from the front and break through the Fatui defenses. The captain won't be on the front lines. As a seasoned warrior, he'll be stationed in close proximity to the device to ensure its protection. No. The purpose of the frontal assault is to gather the Fatui forces in one place. That way, it's easier for the rest of us to avoid them. Shilonen, I need you to do what your tribe does best, and dig a tunnel from the outskirts of the ruin. Once we get close to the device, we just need to destroy it. Exactly. The Traveler and I will join her as well. No one can create a distraction better than you, Kanich. Not even myself. By combining our strengths, we just might manage to break through the captain's defenses. Understood. Then we should, uh, head out now. Just promise us you won't do anything reckless. You cannot face the captain straight on unless you have no other choice. You mean everything to us. Losing you would be the worst possible outcome. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You have my word. I'll proceed with caution. All right. 
This is the place. Their tunnel must be behind that gathering of Fatui guards. Any of the nearby mountains could be a good infiltration point, but if we want to stay under the radar, we should approach from the side. There are only a few Fatui stationed around the perimeter. We should take care of them first so they can't alert anyone. Here comes the catch. What do you think, Shilonen? Is this a good spot? Yeah, looks good. We'll take it from here. I can see the inside! Perfect. We'll keep going. The rest of you should head back. Things are about to get dangerous. All right. Please, take care. That must be the Fatui Tunnel over there. We should steer clear and approach from the side. is from the Masters of the Nightwind. It's Auroron's doing. They're probably trying to buy time. These wheels are relics from ancient times. We should try to restore them. These mechanisms probably control that wheel, right? Let's give them a try.
disappear. Here. This must be it. There they are! Oh, the captain's here too. <laughs> Perfect. Looks like they focused their defenses over there. Oh, they're here. Huh. I thought the Pyro Archon would choose a frontal assault. It doesn't matter. They're too late anyway. Stop! It's too late. We need to turn it off! I won't let you do this! <gasps> the sound of... lament? What was that sound? It was like a piercing cry! Now's our chance to turn off the device! Was Aurora always this good in battle? This ends now! Huh? Something's wrong. You are not Aurora. Who are you? Uh, what? <laughs> Commander. You. So, you still recognize me, Commander? I'm glad. Although, I believe you have some more pressing concerns at the moment. <laughs> you see? You indulge your sense of honor for just a moment, and now you've lost your chance. Even now, you're still the same as ever. His voice is completely different. Is... is someone inhabiting Aurora's body? Stop worrying about other people's survival, about their losses and sacrifices. You just need to win. That must be why I've returned. For this moment. Please finish what you set out to do, Commander. <sighs> I didn't expect to see you here, but I have to disagree. Abandoning one's comrades is not the way of a warrior. Why do you care about a doomed man? I know you can see it. He's already close to death. After all, his soul has been incomplete from the start. Huh. 
Oh, someone said I'm close to death. Is it because of that noise just now? The piercing cry came from underground when I activated the device. What's down there? Natlan's ley lines must be hiding some kind of secret. Uh, am I dying? Oh, no. It's too soon. Ah, Aurora, it's you. What'll it be today? Oh, why the long face? Uh, don't tell me you still haven't let that go. I knew it was a bad idea to tell you. I... I heard everyone wanted me to be the savior. Savior? Ha! Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> but, uh, does such a person truly exist? Even if they do, why would you have to become that person, hmm? Auroron, is that you? Oh, here, have a seat. Let Granny cut you some fruit. We just got a fresh batch. Can I get you anything else? Some grilled meatloaf, maybe? Ask for anything you want. We've got plenty of ingredients. What about those spiced rub mushrooms you made me last time, Granny Kuimi? Ah, you liked those, did you? An outlander taught me that recipe, actually. A merchant, to be exact. Never thought about going into business yourself, my boy. You could travel all over. Our Auroron? A merchant? He's far too honest for that line of work. Well, at least an honest merchant like him wouldn't prey on old-timers like us. Hmm. Everyone said a true savior does not really exist, but then... Why did my birth open the door to the possibility? Why give people false hope? Maybe I don't need to sacrifice myself, but... Surely everyone is born for a purpose. So... What's mine? If I had succeeded back then... Would the world have become a better place? Uh, what's the meaning of my existence? Done spacing out, Auroron? Did you finish your homework? Yes, Granny. It's just... <sighs> Will learning all this really make me as strong as you? <laughs> of course not! I'm a special case. Other shamans study their whole lives without reaching a fraction of my abilities. <sighs> because you're a genius, right? You could say that. <laughs> or maybe I've just been alive longer than the rest of them, and picked up a few tricks that they didn't want to touch. Uh, <clears throat> it's rude to bring up a woman's age. Never do that again, no matter the circumstances. <laughs> um, I wasn't the one who brought it up. Anyway. Class is canceled tomorrow. Go have fun. What about my homework then? Uh, do what you want. What use is it being as strong as me anyway? You've seen how the tribe treats me. They're all afraid. I try to go about my business and they practically tremble in fear. Not the most fun way to go about living one's life, I'd say. Take it from me. The happiest people are the ones who do their own thing. So do what you want, Auroron. No matter what anyone else has to say. Granny didn't say it outright, but I think she was trying to comfort me. Don't force yourself. Don't beat yourself up over the past. That's what she always says. But I never forced myself. I never even got the chance to try before it was all over. 
Hey, you zoning out over here again? There's such a thing as overwatering the radishes, you know. I was just looking at the aphids. Something interesting about them today? Uh, I noticed some on the ground. Maybe it got too cold yesterday and they couldn't handle it. Bummer. Guess that means less honey this year. Aoife, do you think mm, being a vet is fun? Fun? I'm not sure about that. Do you think planting vegetables is fun? Fun enough, I guess. I don't have anything else to do. Exactly. Most people live like that. No special purpose or calling. That's just how the world works. Oh, jeez. That troublemaker's at it again. Aurora on my man. Come inside and give me a hand, would you? Why should I? I thought being a vet was no fun. Well, I guess there is a fun part. Trying to outsmart these rascals. Come on, give me a hand. Maybe Aoife was just too nice to tell me the truth. That attempting something above your capabilities will kill you. My soul is unstable. I only survived because I had people to help keep me in one piece. A part of me has always been missing. That's why the other spirit said I was close to death, but... Why struggle? It's a miracle you were even born. Just close your eyes and wait for death. It was you, the thing that came out of nowhere. Thing? I'm a warrior, far stronger than a weakling like you. I'm not weak. There's just a limit to what I can do. And that's exactly why your fantasy is so ridiculous. You really think a useless thing like you can save the world? Useless? Savior? Ha! Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> but, uh, does such a person truly exist? Even if they do, why would you have to become that person, hmm? Exactly. Most people live like that. No special purpose or calling. That's just how the world works. <sighs> Take it from me. The happiest people are the ones who do their own thing. So do what you want, Auroron. No matter what anyone else has to say. But I don't want things to end here. Auroron? It's all right. We'll take things from here. Every time they marched into battle, I had to stay behind. Don't worry. With the Archon on our side, the Abyss doesn't stand a chance. All the best warriors are fighting on the front lines. I want to do my part too. Both of us are bound to disappear. But your end will come sooner than mine, because you've been broken from the start. Once your soul shatters into pieces and dissipates into the wind, I will take temporary control over this body. I will serve my commander until the end. No. No, this isn't right! My life can't end like this! I... I still haven't done anything important with my life. My end will not come first, and I'm not giving up. <sighs> I can't die here. No! I won't die here! Aurora! Aurora! <sighs> huh? That voice. Control your mind. Feel the ground beneath your feet. This is not your end. Mm. Uh, I...
Well done. You managed to do the impossible. Uh-huh. What do you mean? Don't try to talk. Focus on holding yourself together. <sighs> I can't believe the captain did that. Maybe he thinks of Auroran as a comrade. He was helping to rein him in all this time. Uh, I... I'm fine now. Damage to the soul is a tricky thing. The pain almost consumed you for a moment, but you managed to hold on to yourself. That's no easy feat. The worst appears to be over. Mm, I'm sorry for causing so much trouble. We can talk about that later. Our plan... It failed, didn't it? I'm sorry. We were so close. You saved my life. And now, the debt is repaid. Auroran, I never thought you actually wanted to sacrifice yourself in that ceremony. But you never gave up. Have you come to a conclusion on what it is that you truly want? I just want an answer. A reason why I exist and why everyone always did so much for me. No one is born a hero. And no one should be treated like one from birth. I had a chance to do something important back then, but I failed. All I want is to find some more ways to make up for that. The answer you seek now lies before you. <gasps> You are the inheritor of my name. The hero from the Masters of the Nightwind, who shall fight for this generation. Fascinating. You are not the person that the others thought you were. And yet, you're also not the kind of person that you thought you were. It can take a lifetime to truly discover who we really are. Like you, I never thought I had what it took to be a hero. I was too cunning, too self-absorbed. But in the end, I sacrificed my life for this nation. Now, remember your name. Even if others will see a different meaning, it still symbolizes your nobility and yearning. My ancient name, BD. It means devotion. You will give your all, not for the sake of a heroic death, but to do justice by the answer you found for your life. For that answer, you will offer all of your strength and be born anew. Through your devotion, you will prove your worth. Having foretold his own death, the omniscient man holds a feast in celebration. Let us raise our cups in honor of his heroism and send him off with this final tribute. For at last, his wish is now fulfilled. <laughs> it's nice to see you again, Sun Hodge. With your recognition, we now have the fifth hero of this era. <sighs> I am happy to see your plan advance one step further. It seems that my cry did not cause irreversible damage. What? Uh, what is that voice? Just as I thought. The Lord of the Night has awakened. Lord of the Night? As in the one who rules over the Night Kingdom? 
I preside over a realm of souls. Due to my limited power, sleep is the only way I can extend my existence. When you activated the device, I awoke and could not hold back my cry. It is a sound that agitates souls. Most of you are unaffected because your souls are intact. But, with a damaged soul, the effect on your friend was heightened, and his soul almost shattered as a result. And yet, his soul remains in one piece. He managed to overcome this obstacle through sheer strength of will. A truly impressive feat for a human. So, was that what caused all his strange behavior earlier? No. An additional soul was affected. It tried to take refuge in the missing part of your friend's soul, but was ultimately expelled. However, this soul does not hail from that land or the Night Kingdom. Its origins remain a mystery to me. Activating the source mechanism was supposed to reconstruct the ley lines. Why did it awaken you instead? Because I was the one who originally constructed Natlan's ley lines, otherwise known as the Night Kingdom. The ancient battle between the Descender and the Dragons destroyed the corner of the world, allowing the Abyss to invade. Natland's ley lines took the worst of the damage. To aid the people of Natland, the Lord of the Night used the fragments of the old ley lines to reconstruct a similar network. That's how the Night Kingdom was born. The first Pyro Archon, Shibalanke, strengthened that realm and established the rules that aid our fight against the Abyss, the Ode of Resurrection, and the Pilgrimage, both of which are practices that survive to this day. Oh, right. You said before it all came from the power of the heavens. The ancient dragons tried to use this device to strengthen the ley lines by imbuing them with power. Back then, this method was rather ineffective. They lacked the skills to navigate the intricate structure of the ley lines. And now... The structure of the ley lines has also completely changed. I am the only possible vehicle for the power generated by the device. It was an incredibly crude and painful method, but I managed to absorb some of that power. Now, I can speak to you like this and provide you with aid. Such as rebuilding the ley lines once more, at the cost of my own existence. But why would you make that kind of sacrifice? The people of Natlan worship me and call me their lord. In the ancient past, before we died out, we were also known by a different name. Angels. But adventurers like you are probably more familiar with our devolved form. Seelies. No wonder there are Seelies around here. A Seelie also helped us in the Night Kingdom! Few angels remain in that land. So the same is true of Seelies. Everyone rallied around me and offered their power to humanity to reconstruct the ley lines. Now, I have witnessed your determined pursuit for survival, and I have become your faith. I am very pleased. Moika, inheritor of Shibalonke's will, and leader of Naplan. Despite all the obstacles and misunderstandings, I have awoken. And the efforts of this harbinger and the young hero have imbued me with power. Say the word, and I will once again work to fulfill my mandate, just as I did thousands of years ago. You need only nod your head. 
For the sake of your people and your nation. For the sake of overcoming the invasion from the abyss. Give me your orders. I will not. After reconstructing new ley lines, you will cease to exist. The rules of Natlan are founded in the Night Kingdom. If you disappear, so do they. Not to mention, all the memories and legends recorded within the old ley lines will disappear along with you. The people of Natlan will face memory loss, mental disorders, and cognitive issues. Just like the consequences of using the Gnosis, that is a price I refuse to accept. Humanity's survival is worth any price. Once the Abyss runs rampant, all that remains will be a land of corpses and ruin. And when the new ley lines are invaded again by the Abyss? What then? How are future generations supposed to survive? A land without the Lord of the Night, without the protection of the rules, is doomed from the start. You presume too much. If you cannot ensure survival in the present, you have no right to think about the future. What will it take for you to realize that? How many hundreds or thousands will have to die? The situation hasn't gotten that dire yet, has it? Why? Because I am a survivor of Conria. I've witnessed the devastation and terror of the Abyss with my own eyes. <sighs> That's right. My family. My comrades. My homeland. We're all lost to the abyss. It is an unforgettable pain. One that no amount of time could ever dull. Not even 500 years. You've experienced something similar, Mawika. You should know exactly what I mean. You're right. The pain, the regret, the catastrophe. They all haunt my dreams to this day. If I could go back, I would reject all false hope. I would do whatever it took to ensure their survival. You have that chance before you now. Why do you refuse to take it? Because we don't have the right to make that decision. We love this world because it contains everything we hold dear. Everything that has happened here has moved us, shaped us, and turned us into who we are today. Giving up our memories and history would mean rewriting everything. The people of this world would then become fundamentally different beings, their physical bodies the only connection to their former selves. Even so, given enough time, a new civilization would inevitably flourish. If you believe in humanity, you should trust in their ability to create a new future. Or, history could repeat itself. The Abyss could invade once more, and it would all be for nothing. Can I say something? I once carried the hopes of many people, and I was also desperate to save our nation. In the Captain's plan, I saw a chance to ensure our survival. But as I was on the brink of death, my wish for life and purpose was rekindled. I've been very fortunate to be well cared for by all the people in my life. I refuse to forget that. My feelings were so strong, they overrode my compulsion to sacrifice myself for their safety. No matter what path lies before us, we still have a destination. If we lose our way now, we will lose the meaning of our existence. That's right. Natland's heroes gave their lives so we could have this chance against the Abyss. Their sacrifices are our blessings. Not only are their deeds and spirits exceptionally meaningful, they may also well be our path to victory. I don't want to give up just yet. Yeah, we're just one hero short! The power from the device will allow me to remain awake for some time. I stand at the ready should you change your mind. Even if you fail, you need only send someone my way. My offer still stands. Humanity is truly remarkable. Even the gods in the heavens hold you to be special. Even now, you stand before me, dazzling.
dazzling, like the sun. You must have a profound connection to this land since you're so determined to save it. But what are you really trying to protect? The land, or its people? Hmm. Pretty sure he wants to hear what you have to say, Traveler. Fine. I suppose we can wait. Now that Auroron has inherited the memories of his forebear, there's only one hero left. Your plan does have the potential to generate the best outcome. In the meantime, you shall have the aid of all the Fatui under my command. Thank you. Having such a powerful Harbinger on my side is a big advantage. I know we may never completely see eye to eye on what it means to protect life, but for now, I'm willing to fight by your side. All right, we should uh, let everyone else know about the plan. They're probably still at each other's throats outside. Good idea. We need to explain the situation. Oh, guess we'll stick around then. I'll update everyone outside. Let's meet back up at the stadium. You come to me with many questions. And you should be rewarded for your bravery. Ask, and you shall have the knowledge you seek. They do not like being mentioned by name by any living being. Be it an ordinary human or one of the seven. They prefer to remain in the shadows as shades. The one you wish to know about? I call her the Ruler of Death. She helped Naplan establish the rules. It was also under her guidance that I created the Night Kingdom. It was an expression of love, as well as an act of reparation. She was seen as having significantly overstepped her authorities as a shade, which quite displeased the almighty... <sighs> ...heavenly principles. She succumbed to self-pity as a result, and no longer cared if others discussed her identity. Even so, her existence remains unknown to all but a select few. Self-pity? Please don't tell anyone I use that word. I'm just trying to speak plainly to conserve energy. I'm not familiar with that concept. The device is capable of weaving and creating ley lines, you say? Even I cannot create something from nothing. I can only reconstruct the ley lines by reassembling the yet intact components into a new structure. If that power were available to the people of Natlan, they might have a new option against the Abyss. Phlogiston is to that primordial form of energy. The Heavenly Principles used Phlogiston as a basis for the creation of elemental energy to develop a power to better counter the Abyss. Have you heard of the concepts of the Light Realm and the Human Realm? Hmm. That explanation might take too long. Light refracts into seven different colors, which we collectively refer to as a rainbow. Elemental energy is a similar concept. It's essentially the modern counter- Ah, yes. Yes. The artisan from the Children of Echoes has yet to mention the matter to me. Probably because the young girl from the Masters of the Nightwind is absent. No matter. I'll reach out in a dream and tell them what needs to be done. Young girl? What? Did I say something wrong? In that case, allow me to formally welcome the Fatui to our cause. We now face a common enemy. It's time to put our differences behind us and look to the future. As for Auroron, 
His actions may have been out of line, but I don't intend to punish him right now. I'd rather give him a chance to prove himself. A magnanimous decision. We're back! Whoa, seeing the two of you chatting like this, Paimon almost feels like she's dreaming. This may be an unexpected outcome, but a favorable one nonetheless. Now that we're all here, I have some questions of my own. Tell me, how did you discover the source mechanism? We weren't getting any closer to obtaining the Gnosis, so I had my men scour Natland for a different option. Auroron helped as well. We tracked down three scholars, Aberawa, Bosomtwe, and Kushtal, and combined the results of their research to locate this ancient device. <sighs> I've never heard those names before. Seems like my own investigation failed to locate some critical personnel. I'm just not sure how I missed them. Strange. Perhaps they simply live in seclusion. In any case, their results speak for themselves. That's true. Now we have another option at our disposal. Compared to using the Gnosis, our current plan will buy us some time. And if all else fails, we still have this plan as a last resort. Even though executing it will come at a heavy cost. But that means making everyone forget their past! We should definitely try to avoid it if we can! Oh, actually, speaking of the Gnosis, how did you know what it could do? That story begins with the Cataclysm 500 years ago. I failed to save Conria from the rampage of the Abyss. When the situation became unsalvageable, I fled to Natlan with the remainder of my platoon. Only to find that Natlan had fallen victim to the same tragedy. I defended this land for quite some time, and, in the process, met the chief of the Masters of the Nightwind, Aizu. I'm sure many people viewed Conria as the cause of the tragedy. But Aizu was kind to me all the same, and even helped me in my time of need. From that moment, I made it my mission to aid Natlan. In battle, a warrior fights to win. Even though my homeland was lost, I was already committed to this fight. Together, Aizu and I fought many battles and overcame countless hardships. However, he was unable to escape his fate. And, in his final moments, told me the secret of the Gnosis. So it was him. He recommended using the Gnosis on several occasions, even before the tragedy. But I turned him down each time. You knew him, and you fought for Natlan all those years ago. Why don't I recognize you? <sighs> it must be the mask. <clears throat> even without the mask, my past appearance is long gone. Even with the curse of immortality, the flesh still rots. Wait, do you know someone named Dainsliff? That problem doesn't seem quite so... extreme for him. You've met him already? Yeah, a bunch of times. Sounds like you know him too. During the Age of Conria, all I knew was his name. The last time I saw him in person, he was traveling with the Prince. He carries a degree of pain and hatred that far surpasses my own. Yes, you're the sister of the Prince. Given the role I held in Conria, I would prefer not to harm you. Although, this is likely a self-imposed burden. If the Prince saw me now, I doubt he would even recognize me. As for your question, I don't know how Dane managed to slow the deterioration of his body. My appearance is much changed, and that's not the only thing. Even my physical strength is a shadow of what it once was. I would have never known. During our battle, it felt like I was fighting against the pinnacle of human strength. Hmm. <laughs> And I still lost. I deserve no praise for that outcome. Still, it's a shame we never faced off 500 years ago. You could have seen what I was truly capable of. I agree. 
Had we fought then, I'd also have been more motivated to go all out. So, all that commotion back at the stadium, and you're saying neither of you were using your full strength? <laughs> I'd say we're evenly matched. If we face off again, victory will come down to who wants it more. I imagine you held back since there were spectators around that could have gotten hurt. But capitalizing on that situation would have only led to a hollow victory. It would have been no different than taking hostages. My goal was the Gnosis, and I failed to obtain it. That means I lost, plain and simple. Her Majesty the Tsaritsa allows every Harbinger the freedom to pursue the meaning of their existence. When the time comes, that freedom can take precedence over her orders. That's why our methods can be so radically different, despite sharing the same goal and the same sovereign. I needed the Gnosis because I came here to save Natlan. That was my primary motive. Once Natlan is saved, if the Gnosis still remained in my possession, I could bring it back to Snezhnaya. My decision regarding the Gnosis will not change. So let's focus on the Abyss for now. Right! I... What happens when all six heroes are together? We will unleash a great power that can be used to thwart the Abyss. But only once. It's a power that Shibalanke gained from Renova. Renova is a god whose existence predates any Archon. You can think of her like an emissary of the Heavenly Principles. She controls the power of death. Wait, is that why you have the Ode of Resurrection? Yes. Renova also orchestrated Natlan's rules. As for the Divine Throne, like I said before, when a human ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. The size of the flame depends on the person's potential. The same principle applies to the ruler of death's power. With one notable distinction. The amount of power inherited will not change depending on your ability to tolerate it. In other words, it's a kind of power that not everyone can withstand. But if you survive the trial, you will gain unprecedented strength and the ability to harness powers more formidable than any Archon. That still sounds really risky. We cannot walk this path without accepting risk. Mualani charged into the Night Kingdom despite the Abyssal contamination. Auroron fought back from the brink of death. In the face of their bravery, I must respond in kind. That is my duty. Spoken like a true leader. <sighs> All right, that's enough for one day. You should head back and get some rest. I'm sure you're exhausted. The Abyss will likely sense the change in Auroron. It's possible the frequency of the attacks will increase. There are many challenges to come, so we need to be prepared. When you put it that way, Paimon feels even more exhausted. Oh, all right, let's head back. Now that we're working together, we'll need to coordinate our efforts. I'll leave a portion of my forces for you to command. That will definitely help relieve some pressure. You're sure they won't object? It's an order. I will make that clear. Excellent. I appreciate your trust. The monsters keep increasing in number. It's like something changed. It's definitely unusual, and we should all be careful. But don't worry too much. You have us by your side. If there's one thing the Abyss fears, it's strength. If they think we're easy prey, they've got another thing coming. Oh, uh, someone's calling us. Uh, something wrong, Traveler? 